Mike Kako, a Como Mida Curtain Call, a weekly program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Theater Theater Maui celebrated its 32nd year of producing quality summer youth theater this past weekend at Lahaina Intermediate School Cafetorium. These ill-conceived and anti-art spaces infesting public schools throughout our state are a parsimonious monument by people who either never saw or hated live theater. However, the creative, inventive, and ambitious production team of Christy Scott, director, and assisted by Francis Tawa, with set design by Carol Walker, have translated that hostility into a marvelous theater space. They produced Tina Fey, Jeff Richmond, and Mel Benjamin's Mean Girls Jr. for just one weekend, and it was a pure delight. The pacing of the show was perfect, the singing by everyone was terrific, and the big numbers, there were 41 cast members, were particularly effective. Credit Felicia Trinicki Wolf, choreographer for this. The story was told in flashback by two outcast Damien, Aiden Eledo, and Janice Sarkazian, Zoe Roman. They tell how Katie Heron, Anna Mae Stoops, came to North Shore High School in Chicago to be socialized since she grew up alone and was homeschooled in Kenya. She was an outsider and a brainiac as well. Talk about a formula for being a reject. She struggled for acceptance and was embraced by Janice and Damien. Then the Plastics, led by Regina George, Megan Utrio, with sidekicks Gretchen Wieners, Avery English, and the appropriately named Karen Smith, Kaylin McClintock, embrace her as well. Katie is smitten with Aaron Samuels, Rocco Dahl. She finds out from Janice and Damien, he just broke up with Regina, and it would be unforgivable for her to take up with him. In the meantime, Janice and Damien convince Katie she should spy on the plastics and report everything they say. In order to become accepted, Katie abandons her true self to become a plastic. She uses deceit, drama, trickery, backstabbing, mendacity, and betrayal to dethrone Regina and then becomes her. She learns her old self was better than the new one, Ultimately, the lesson of the show is know yourself, love yourself, and don't try to be someone else. What a great job they did. The show worked in every way, and it was clear everyone was having a blast, and so was the audience. Ms. Stoops found all the nuances of this complex character, the initial naivete, the seduction by the plastics, the need to change who she is, including hiding her intellectual superiority in order to be accepted, her full transformation into a superficial, selfish teen, and then her realization. Everything worked. She also had some outstanding musical moments as well, like every one of her songs were as fine as they could be, especially her duet with Mr. Dahl, One More Is Better, in Act Two, and her solo on Stupid With Love. Megan or Trio's Regina displayed the uber ego of the character and captured her anger and desperation as she was eclipsed by Katie. Her opening number on Meet the Plastics perfectly encapsulated the character and her solo in World Burn was another high point in the show. Master Aledo's Damien was completely comfortable in his skin, and his expressive fans were a great stylist and character touch. And Ms. Ronan is the perfect friend, loyal, caring, and fun-loving. Her song, I'd Rather Be Me, in Act Two, was the showstopper. Excellent work. Ms. English's Gretchen is so desperate to be the handmaiden of Regina, she would do anything. Her self-appraisal in What's Wrong With Me was another terrific song in this show filled with them. Karen is one of the most apt names for Ms. McClintock's character. She isn't fully aware of her less than stellar IQ and isn't proud but resigned. Her blank stare and long moments where she was trying to figure something out were brilliant acting choices, and she got to display her lovely voice in rocking around the pole. Sebastian Navarro as Kevin G wrapped with the best of them in Do This Thing. There were nine numbers that involved the ensemble, and they not only sang, but they danced. Kudos to Felicia Trinicki Wolf for the choreography, and as always, the wonderful Vanya Jerome for helming the music. 
I just wish they had real live musicians accompanying these fine young people, not a fan of tracks. Accolades to Linda Tim for the costumes. This was a huge show with tons of costumes, and the outfits for every cast member in every scene were thoughtful and entirely fitting. Good job. Praise goes to Ms. Scott and Mr. Tawa for their vision of this complex show in this space that is designed for eating lunch, not for theater. But they made it work beautifully. Bravo! Barry Kawakami and Wave of Harmony Foundation paid for everyone in the audience. That is the kind of support he has for our youth theater. He was joined by Gilbert and Allison Cam Church Charitable Trust. Mahalo nui loa to these angels who make youth theater possible here on Maui. I only regret the show did not have a longer run. All I can say is keep your eyes open next summer for their 33rd anniversary. They always do outstanding work. Have you ever wondered how chocolate gets from the cacao bean to the bar you enjoy? Well, why don't you take the factory tour at Maui's award-winning chocolatier, Kuya Estate Chocolates in Lahaina. The tour takes you through every phase of preparation from bean to bar. Conducted by Kuya's CEO and owner, Dr. Gunnar's Valkyrs, PhD. You have to eschew your slippers, closed toe shoes are required, and they will provide a hairnet for you. The tour begins outside the factory under the bank of solar panels. Dr. Valkyrs explained that the factory is off the grid. The energy generated during the day is stored in Tesla batteries for use in the night. Then the guests enter the area where the cacao beans are stored. Here we see bags from Ecuador, Ghana, and the white bags are from Maui. Dr. Valkyrs described the intricacies and transforming the cacao. Two of them are fermentation and drying. These steps are crucial to developing Kuya's unique flavor profile. Kuya is the only chocolatier to have won two gold awards in the Cacao of Excellence competition. They won in 2021 and amazingly again in 2023. The tasters were quoted as saying, quote, this is an amazing flavor in chocolate I've never tasted before, unquote. Dr. Valkyrs attributed the uniqueness of the Maui-grown chocolate flavor profile to the distressed nature of the plant. He says that the arid climate of Lahaina is the exact opposite of what cacao needs to thrive, and the struggle of the plant contributed to that special stress-flavored profile. They also won two Good Foods Awards. Then it's on to the roaster. They actually vacuum the beans into the roaster, which is gas operated. This is the same kind of roaster used for coffee, but for chocolate, it needs to roast at a much lower temperature, between 200 and 250 degrees. This, we are told, will kill all microorganisms. Next, you will get to taste the nibs after roasting and winnowing, and then after they have been milled to 15 microns to produce delicious chocolate. Now it's over to the conch or melting tank. Here the chocolate is mixed, then it is over to the tempering machine where the chocolate is slowly heated and it's into the cooling tunnel, allowing the cocoa mass to solidify and stabilize without tempering the chocolate would separate and would not harden well. A trip to the wrapping machine. This machine can wrap up to 90 pieces a minute. It's a fascinating machine built in England. Finally, you will get a chance to see over a million dollars of chocolate in this giant cooler. Dr. Valkas will tell you a wine cooler is the ideal for chocolate. Then you will go up to the beautiful open air pavilion on the top floor for a tasting of three pieces that are picked for everyone and four pieces of your choice. It's a wonderful experience that will make you appreciate chocolate all the more. Go to www.mauichocolate.com to register for the factory tour. Incidentally, they do not accept cash except as tips for the servers and clerks at the counter in the cafe, which I highly encourage. Also, all of the net profits of Kuya Estate Chocolates go to Maui Charities. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Mahalo nui lo for tuning in. I'm Paul Janes Brown. Maui Strong. Ahui ho.